Aloha. 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 All right, we've been here long enough. We know it. Aloha and Ikomama to the 2020 Indo Pacific Air and Missile Defender of the Year ceremony. I'm Anthony Spadaro, and I have the privilege to serve as your Master of Ceremonies for the second annual event where we will recognize your Indo Pacific Air and Missile Defenders of the Year. Can you all please rise now as we honor our great nation with the playing of our national anthem? which will be sung today by Specialist Kira McLean, the 25th Infantry Division Band, and remain standing for the invocation by Lieutenant Colonel Brian Palmer, Chaplain Corps, United States Army. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the Please join me as I pray. Dear Lord, we are grateful for this nation you have given us, a land of peace, of hope, and prosperity. You have entrusted us with a call to serve this nation and your people, to protect them from all threats, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Today, we honor those who take this calling to heart and have excelled at their tasks, their duties, and their commitments. This is true across all branches of the military. And we're grateful for these individuals. We're also grateful for the teams they are part of. For today, truly, we are a, a team of teams. Help us to stand ready as a joint force to defend this land. Be with all represented here. Let us be found faithful to our commitments to our nation, to our friends and allies. Strengthen us for all that we have to face. Be with us and our great nation. In Christ's holy name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. And thank you, Specialist McLean, for that beautiful rendition of our national anthem and thank you, Chaplain Palmer, for gracing us all with your prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, mahalo nui loa for your attendance to take time today to recognize the best of our best, the air and missile defenders from our air, sea, land, and space components of Indo-Pacific Command. The honorees today have demonstrated to their respective commands their leadership and fortitude. They have earned the respect trust and honor for their actions in operating and further developing the most prominent integrated air and missile defense platforms that have been in place in the world today. Your honorees truly represent with zeal, alacrity, and a ready to fight and win attitude that demonstrates the eternal vigilance, which is the hallmark of all air and missile defenders who remain on the watch to protect and defend our great nation, our partners, and our allies. Today's ceremony is sponsored by the Missile Defense Advocacy Alliance. The NDA was founded 17 years ago by Ricky Ellison as a nonprofit organization 
that seeks to generate public support for the continued testing, development, and deployment of missile defense systems to protect our countries and our allies. MDA's mission is to make the world safer by advocating for the development and deployment of missile defense systems to defend the United States, its armed forces, and its allies against missile threats. MDA is the only organization in existence whose primary mission is to educate the American public about missile defense issues and to recruit, organize, and mobilize proponents to advocate for the critical need of missile defense. So with that stated, let's get this candlestick lit and get started. And first, we'd like to acknowledge that we are forever grateful for the leadership of Admiral Philip Davidson, the combatant commander of the United States Command. And as you know, the Admiral wanted to be part of the ceremony today and recognize our great honorees. However, he's currently across the pond engaging with our allies and partners right now. So on behalf of Admiral Davidson, we are fortunate to have the Deputy Commander of the United States Indo-Pacific Command, Lieutenant General Mike Minahan, to welcome us all on behalf of the 370,000 soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of the command. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Mike Minahan. Aloha and good morning. Thank you for the kind introduction and for inviting me to speak today. Thank you to Ricky Ellison and the Missile Defense Advocacy Alliance and its board of directors for your tremendous work and for hosting this ceremony. On behalf of Admiral Davidson, it is an absolute pleasure to be a part of this ceremony where we honor the very best air and missile defenders from the U.S. Army Pacific, the U.S. Pacific Air Forces, the U.S. Pacific Fleet, and the U.S. Space Force for their outstanding air and missile defense achievements in 2020. While I'm sad that I cannot be there to celebrate these accomplishments in person, I'm thrilled to be able to virtually share in your achievements, congratulate you for an outstanding job well done, and say mahalo for the contributions of an incredibly important strategic mission that is often taken for granted. I'd like to welcome today's distinguished guests who have joined us to celebrate the accomplishments of our award winners. I also want to offer a special welcome and heartfelt congratulations to our five awardees and their amazing families. As many of you who are a part of this ceremony know, the Indo-Pacific is the single most consequential region for America's future. It is the United States priority theater as clearly highlighted by the National Security Strategy and the National Defense Strategy. Our Indo-PACOM forces operate throughout the region to deter aggression, ensure freedom of navigation, provide access to global markets, and promote regional stability, mutual security, and economic prosperity. In this theater, joint missile defense systems must work together to coordinate and prosecute engagements, to maximize strengths and minimize weaknesses, and to overcome any adversary's numerical advantages. The United States will continue to depend on our missile defense in today's increasingly complex security environment and tomorrow's evolving challenges to peace, security, and prosperity. The missile defenders we celebrate today are making this difficult and complicated work happen. And it goes without saying that MDAA provides a powerful voice to generate public support for the continued testing, development, and deployment of missile defense systems that protect our nation and our partners and allies. Your efforts support the ideals of a free and open Indo-Pacific vision we advocate and share with senior government, military officials, and defense industry, as well as our allies and partners. I'm personally grateful for your commitments to highlighting this unique and vital role of U.S. missile defense in the Indo-Pacific region and around the world. Finally, I would like to commend MDAA's advocacy for what is truly our number one priority. Your organization has chosen to invest in our most critical resource, our people and their families. Fostering our next generations of soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, Coast Guardsmen and Guardians to lead the department into the future is a national security imperative. To our award recipients, on behalf of the entire Indo-PACOM Ohana, again, congratulations and mahalo for everything you have done and continue to do to support the safety and security of the United States of America and our allies and partners. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. How about we give it up one more time for Lieutenant General Minahan.
Now it's my privilege to introduce the Deputy Commander of Pacific Air Forces, Lieutenant General John Thomas, who will have the honor to present the PACAF Defender of the Year. Lieutenant General John T. Thomas is the Deputy Commander, Pacific Air Forces, Joint Base Pearl Harbor, Hickam, Hawaii, and the Deputy Theater Air Component Commander to the Commander, United States Indo-Pacific Command. PACAF is responsible for Air Force activities spread over half the globe, and this command supports 46,000 airmen, serving principally in Japan, Korea, Hawaii, Alaska, and Guam. Lieutenant General Thomas is a graduate from the United States Air Force Academy in 1989. He has commanded operational flying units at the squadron group and wing levels, and as a command pilot with more than 4,000 hours in 11 different aircraft. Prior to his current position, Lieutenant General Thomas served as the Deputy Commander, Air Mobility Command, Scott Air Force Base, Illinois. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to introduce Lieutenant General John Thomas. All right, well, good morning, everybody. And it, uh, it is certainly a pleasure and a privilege to be here um, representing the Pacific Air Forces. And, and uh, our role here is the Theater Area Air Defense Commander. Um, and doing this on behalf of my boss, General Ken Wilsbach, who couldn't make it here, um, but is extremely proud of the achievements of all the missile defenders that are being recognized here today. Uh, and especially proud of uh, Captain Bath, who uh, will receive the award for PACAF. And I'll get a chance to talk a little bit more about him. Um, First of all, I just want to uh, say particular thanks to uh, uh, Chief or Sergeant Major there for giving me a nice welcome and uh, introduction. Um, it's great to see all the other senior leaders here from Indo-PACOM and the other service components. Colleagues, thanks for joining us here. Um, and uh, particularly, I want to say thanks, and it's already been mentioned by General Manahan, but um, MDAA is a fantastic organization. And, uh, does a lot of great things that we aren't necessarily able to in uniform to advocate for uh, missile defense. And uh, it's led by a, a really great person uh, and a, a personal friend that's developed over previous time period when I was in USAFE and uh, working on missile defense there, and that's Ricky Ellison. So Ricky, thanks for all you're doing for the country and for our armed forces uh, and, our, and our particular services uh, as it applies to missile defense. Um, so. You know, it's great to have everybody out here. I, I think that uh, this is being taped and also broadcast, and so it's great to see everybody, and I welcome all that are out there in, in the virtual world. I want to talk a little bit about, from the PACAF and Theater Area Air Defense Commander, how important missile defense is. Um, we've got bases all over the world. Um, we've got bases all over the theater. And we all know that every single one of those bases are targeted or can be targeted. And we got to be able to do something about that. And there's a lot of different things that we can do, but one of them in particular is missile defense. Um, we've got to do more. Uh, we have to have better capabilities. What we have is good now, uh, but we've got to be able to deal with things like hypersonic weapons and maneuvering targets and all those kind of things that um, in the, the chase back and forth of who's going to have the advantage, our opponents are always going to keep trying. Um, as the Theater Area Air Defense Commander, it's particularly notable that for all of the awardees here, maybe not surprising, they work in some way, shape, or form with us at, at PACAF. Um, most actually in the building right across from headquarters PACAF in the 613th AOC. And uh, I think that, that you might hear from uh, General Neal, but certainly from the 94th uh, team, how we almost, if I could change their uniforms and call them airmen, I would because we're that close of a team. We really love the relationship with the, have the, the 94th and General Holler as the, as the dad scene. Um, so all that said to kind of to set up and, and transition to our particular missile defender that I get the privilege and honor of recognizing today. Um, and it's Captain Ryan Bath. And uh, Ryan is just fantastic. He's, he's part of our team that's keeping watch, uh, keeping us safe, and keeping us ahead of the enemy. Um, he's uh, our Deputy Chief of Space and Missile Warning um, over in the 613th AOC. Um, over the past year, he's put in over 300 hours of missile defense operations uh, through the 24-7 utilization and monitoring of the missile defense system. He directly contributed to the defense of 36 nations here in the Indo-Pacific AOR. Um, and he's provided senior leaders, General Wilsbach, myself, and others, uh, timely missile warning and attack assessment for uh, 165 ballistic missile activities that occurred uh, across this largest AOR in the DOD. 
Uh, in addition uh, to current operations, he's also been focused on training. And so uh, he was uh, the lead on an overhaul of the unit's mission qualification training, which uh, ended up subsequently training over 700 operators to be prepared to execute uh, missile defense. Um, I, I want to do a shout out to uh, his family if they are watching right now or maybe watching later on. Ryan told me about his lovely wife and his two Scottish twins, uh, Kenzie and Cooper. So uh, if you're out there, um, thank you for your support to Captain Bath, to your uh, husband and dad for all the work that he's been able to do uh, for our organization, but more importantly for the nation. Thank you for that. And so uh, with that, I'm going to close up and uh, we'll proceed with the ceremony and do the recognition here of Captain Bath. Got a piece of paper. No one likes papers, but helps me uh, concentrate here. So uh, I would first like to thank General Thomas for your kind introduction. You and the entire U.S. Indo-PACOM and PACAF leadership team have enabled airmen like myself to carry out the missile defense mission and protect our homeland from adversaries that may otherwise cause harm. I would also like to thank Colonel Evans, Colonel Jackson, and Mr. Ewan from the 613th Air Operations Center leadership team and Colonel Zelensky from the PACAF staff for continuously strengthening missile defense operations when it matters most and ensuring my team has the necessary organization, training, and equipment to be successful on today's battlefield. I would also like to thank Ricky Ellison and the Missile Defense Advocacy Alliance for their continued drive to ensure our world is a safer place. And finally, there is no way that I would be here if it were not for the unconditional support from my teammates peers, mentors, and family members to include my wife, Danielle, my daughter, Kensington, and son, Cooper. It is my great honor to accept this prestigious award for Missile Defender of the Year. As many of you are aware, there are countless professionals in the missile defense pre profession that are deserving of this award, and I am blessed to be recognized amongst the distinguished members that stand watch on nights, weekends, birthdays, and holidays to ensure that our nation and its allies remain safe. In all honesty, it was a great surprise to learn that I was even considered for an award of this significance, and it's a true testament to the leaders that believed in and guided me here today. Most people don't know this about me, but during my enlisted days in the Army, I was deployed to a location in Iraq that was 35 kilometers from Operation Red Dawn, the mission where Saddam Hussein was captured. After this operation was completed, there was a constant threat from mortars, rockets, and the potential for inbound adversarial missiles on our base. This threat kept us all up at night, and we prayed that the missile defense systems would reduce or eliminate the threat to minimize the loss of life. After joining the Air Force some years later, never in my wildest dreams did I think that I would become a member of the team that conducts missile defense operations and keeps personnel like my previous self safe. Please know that I am incredibly grateful to be part of the missile defense team and am forever humbled to receive an award of this caliber that signifies peace and prosperity for all. Selected and the team selected to do that. So 
in games, we present the game ball to the game changer. And Ryan was a game changer last year during, during COVID to run the, the 613th AOC to make sure all of us in this theater were safe and secure during one of the biggest challenges of our nation. So congratulations, and here is your ball top buddy. Yeah. We're gonna also get a little privilege. We're gonna, he's a world champion. He's not a Super Bowl champion, he's a world champion. So I wanted to give you this on, on my personal behalf uh, for you, for you, you know, you being a champion and a leader. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's my privilege to introduce Rear Admiral John Wade, who will have the honor of presenting the Pacific Fleet Defender of the Year Award. And Rear Admiral Wade is the Director of Operations J3 United States Indo-Pacific Command. And he's a native of Port Washington, New York, and a 1990 graduate of the United States Naval Academy with a bachelor's degree in economics. He also holds a master's degree in information systems technology from the United States Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, California, and a master's degree in national security strategy from the National War College in Washington, D.C. His assignments at sea are many and include tours with the USS Arthur W. Radford, the USS Benfold, and the USS Cape St. George. He's also commanded the USS Firebolt, the USS Preble, Destroyer Squadron 28, and Carrier Strait Group 12. Over the course of his career, Rear Admiral Raid has completed multiple deployments supporting overseas operations to include Desert Storm, Southern Watch, Noble Eagle, Enduring Freedom, and Iraqi Freedom. Ashore, there has been many assignments, from the Chief of Naval Operations Personal Staff to the Assistant to the Director of the Quadrennial Defense Review, also sitting as a Deputy Exec Executive Assistant to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and also the Chief of Staff of Commander Naval Surface Forces, Commander Naval Surface Force, U.S. Pacific Fleet. He is also the Commander Naval Surface and Mine Warfare, the Fighting Development Center, and the Navy Global Mine Warfare Battle Staff, and the Director of Maritime Operations, the United States Fleet Forces. Also, and I like this one, sir, he's also served the Army's 10th Mountain and 82nd Airborne Divisions as Commanding Officer of the Joint Interagency Provincial Reconstruction Team in Afghanistan. He currently assumed his current duties as Director of Joint Operations, J3, United States Indo-Pacific Command, in October 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause in welcoming Rear Admiral Wade to the stage. Sergeant Mayor, thank you so much for your uh, kind remarks. I really appreciate it. Um, General Thomas, nice to see you here, sir, and uh, dis distinguished guests, thank you both here and virtually. Uh, Ricky and team, I uh, just want to thank you for everything that you do to protect our great nation. And uh, I'd also like to give a shout out to the 94th for everyone here and behind the scenes that aren't here that uh, set up this wonderful ceremony. Um, so uh, as General Minahan highlighted, uh, Admiral Davidson is currently on the road, so I'm representing him, so it's an honor for me to speak. And I think we all know that we live in a dangerous, complex, and a rapidly changing world where our security interests and those of our allies are increasingly uh, challenged. And uh, our national defense strategy recognizes that we, as a joint combined military, need to ensure that we focus on joint high-end warfare, not only to deter conflict, but if so, we must be prepared and ready to fight and win, and that is critically important. Now, there's a temporal aspect to all of this. That means that we must be prepared to do both, to deter and fight and win today with the weapons, the networks, the sensors, the people that we have currently in our inventory, but at the same time, we've got to experiment We've got to test new concepts, and we've got to drive requirements to modernize and bring new capabilities to the forefront. So that's critical, and that is nowhere more evident than the integrated air missile defense mission area. 
Now, integrated air and missile defense is inherently a joint and combined coalition effort in all domains. And it's imperative that we defend not only the homeland, but our joint force and our allies, friends, and partners throughout the world. And although the sensors and the command and control networks and the weapons that we have are critically important, at the core, it's the people that counts the most. And it's the soldiers, the sailors, the airmen, the Marines, and the guardians that are working this mission area each and every day to protect our bases, our people, and our locations where we have our friends and allies. So on behalf of Admiral Davidson, uh, I want to just thank all of you here and those that are forward deployed executing this mission. And I'd also like to pass on the Admiral's hearty congratulations to our winners of uh, the awards today for what you do each and every day. Just absolutely amazing. And uh, you certainly distinguish, distinguish yourself amongst the team of teams. So congratulations to you all. So what I'd like to do now is just uh, shift focus a little bit and uh, change my remarks to uh, introduce the Navy recipient of uh, today's award. And that goes to Lieutenant Simon Masonhing, the fire control officer on USS uh, John Finn. Now, I have to tell you, his contributions in the IND mission area are significant and will be long-lasting. He's an inspirational leader, and he's a technical and tactical ninja. And not only did he ensure that John Finn was materially and tactically and technically ready to go and meet all mission requirements on deployment, he led two significant events that are game changers. The first was that he led FTM 44, which was the first time in history that a surface combatant engaged an ICBM target using the SM-3 Block II missile, leveraging the engage on remote capability, which really did uh, significant efforts here to, uh, to extend our range from which we can hit targets. And then secondly, he led efforts in an MDA-sponsored uh, uh, effort where John Finn uh, was able to track a hypersonic glide vehicle. And this is not an easy feat. He had, with his team, had to adjust sensor settings to track at long range and for a significant amount of time. And the data that was collected has already been uh, uh, woven into bringing capability to the fleet in two years, and that data has been pushed to the rest of the joint force to modernize our existing weapon systems to get after a growing, growing threat. So as you can see, he focused on today, making sure John Finn was ready, and then just two examples, he prepared uh, our joint force to ensure that we can continue to modernize and be ready to rock and roll in the future. So uh, unfortunately, Simon couldn't be here today, uh, but he's where he needs to be. He's underway at sea at this very moment. So if I could just please ask for a round of applause, and then we're going to shift to a video where uh, we'll get a chance to see him. So how about a round of applause for Simon? So I think uh, we'll play the pre-recorded message now. Congratulations, Simon. Thank you for your excellence. And congratulations for being selected the Navy's best missile defender of the year for the Indo-Pacific region. We're coming from a, from a big time ship here that represents the deterrence, the security of our country in making the world safe. From ship to ship, to your ship, to John S. Flynn, from doing that and what you achieved with that ship last year in the FTM 44 test and making our nation and the world a safer place. So from ship to ship, I'm gonna make you go deep and we're gonna throw it from one of the great ships of our history to one of our great future ships of our history. Here we go. He's gonna swing it again towards the end zone. Thank you. Hi, 
I'd like to thank everyone at the Missile Defense Advocacy Alliance for honoring me as your 2020 Missile Defender of the Year. As you know, BMD is a pro sport and no one can be successful without the help of a terrific team. I'd like to thank everyone on the USS John Finn for their outstanding efforts this past year in making the mission happen. Everything from sailing halfway around the world to maintaining our equipment to the highest standards and executing live fire missile shoots, it is truly amazing what we can accomplish as a team. It's folks like these that win championships. Thank you and go Navy. So we have covered the air and the sea, but now it's my privilege to introduce the Deputy Commanding General of the United States Army Pacific, Major General Reginald Neal, who have the honor of awarding the United States Army Pacific Defenders of the Year. Now, Major General Neal was commissioned in 1989 after graduating from Georgia Southern University. And something warm and near and dear to my heart, he is a career field artillery officer. So I will speak a little louder so you can hear, sir. Major General Neal has had an extensive career leading soldiers in both peacetime and combat at all levels of command. And before assuming his role as the Deputy Commanding General of the United States Army Pacific, he served as the Commander, Joint Task Force North, United States Northern Command. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to introduce to you Major General Neal. <laughs> Thank you, Sergeant Major. Lieutenant General Thomas, uh, Admiral Wade, of course, Mr. Ellison, our previously mentioned general officers, our colonels, sergeants, major, and other distinguished guests. I appreciate the opportunity to represent uh, General LaCamera, U.S. Army Pacific, commanding this ceremony uh, as we recognize two outstanding Army missile defenders who have done so much for this theater during this past year. Uh, 2020 was indeed a year with many, many challenges. Even as a career field artillery officer, I understand the Army's critical role in missile defense, and especially in the Indo-Pacific Theater. Army Patriot and THAAD uh, units are postured <clears throat> uh, on freedom's front, frontier in Korea and Japan, diligently watching the skies to protect our allies. I recently visited our active duty and National Guard soldiers in Guam on another vital THAAD mission. They're protecting America's homeland. And of course, the Sea Dragons of the 94th Air Missile Defense Command right here on the front lines here in Hawaii, closely working with our joint service partners and allies protecting the Pacific homeland. Our first awardee is Lieutenant Colonel Will Hunter of the 94th Army Air Missile Defense Command. Last year, Will served as the current operations chief of the 94th the Commander's Senior Representatives to PACAF 613th Air Operations Center. He provided outstanding leadership to nearly 70 Army Air Missile Defenders, conducting daily operations in support of Indo-Pacific. He oversaw weekly efforts to posture Army, Air Force, and Navy Air and Missile Defense efforts for contingency operations, exercises, and in response to real-world activities. Because of Will's inspiring leadership, our air and missile defense forces remain ready to fight tonight. Thank you, General Neal, for the introduction. I'd also like to thank General Holler and the leadership of the 94th LAMBC for the nomination. I'd like to thank the other flag and general officers who are supporting the event today and the, the miss, air missile defenders who are present. Of course, I want to thank Mr. Ellison, who, as the name of his organization implies, is a tireless advocate for air missile defense. And then, assuming that she got the YouTube link to work, hi, Mom. <laughs> it's good this is a joint ceremony. 
because I don't feel like I'm up here as an individual, but rather as a representative, what we call the Joint Theater Air Missile Defense Team that General Neal alluded to, or JTMD, because we like a good acronym in the military. We meet regularly, but specifically in response to any kind of missile provocations in the theater to provide the recommendations that ensure that the forces in theater are postured appropriately to that hostility. And ironically, in the joint theme before we came here today, I got to attend an award ceremony where we gave an Army award to an Air Force officer, also a strong air missile defender, Major Dan Trueblood, who received that award in no small part for his support to the JTMD uh, team over the last several years. And I like the way that he put it. That organization is one that puts aside their joint biases to do what is required to make the mission happen. And he's absolutely right. And so I thank all of them. And on behalf of them, I thank all of you. Congratulations, William. A lot to you for your teams in, in the remote parts of Japan on a TV2 radar that are on the front line of the threat out there this past year. So congratulations for being the Army Missile Defender of the Year for Indo Pacific. Right? <laughs> hands like that, the Atlanta Falcons could uh, <laughs> use some help. Next up is our Chief Warrant Officer, Robert Finley, of the 14th Missile Defense Battery Sensor Manager Cell. Chief, fin Chief Finley's SMC team is on watch 24-7 in support of Homeland and Theater Missile Defense. In 2020, he drafted the first standardized training circular for all the missile def defense batteries across our Army developed concepts that allowed sensor managers to partic participate in two large-scale Indo-PACOM exercises and helped design procedures for Army sensors to support tracking of objects in outer space. When COVID struck, Chief Finley helped develop an innovative virtual certification approach that allowed his soldiers to maintain their incredibly high level of technical and tactical expertise even in a COVID environment. Chief Finley's accomplishments are truly remarkable. Thank you, sir, for the kind introduction. And uh, thank you to all the senior leaders here in attendance. Uh, the fact that you all took time out of your busy schedules just shows how important the missile defense uh, is, especially in this theater. Um, thank you, Mr. Ellison, for this great honor um, and the entire Missile Defense Advocacy Alliance. <clears throat> uh, the fact that you try to keep missile defense in the public eye by advocating for us uh, is a great help to what we do. Uh, it's not a very well-known portion of the military. People think of boats and tanks when they think the Army. Missile defense doesn't the first thing to come to mind. So your, or your organization does a great thing. Thank you so much. I'd also like to thank my family, who, thanks to Rona, can't be here, but is hopefully watching online, like Colonel Hunter said, assuming they got the link to work. Um, I'd like to thank my wife, Robin, who's put up with so much over the past 20 years we've been married and in uh, my time in the Army. Uh, she's a remarkable woman and she puts up with everything, usually without complaint. My son, who was way more understanding, my son Christian, sorry, who was way more understanding than he shot probably should be when dad has to miss the occasional baseball or football game, but sometimes entire seasons. Thank you, Christian, I love you, buddy. My daughter, Shelby, who, as some of you know, is also a veteran. She did six years in the Army and is currently attending college uh, with the goal of becoming a social worker specializing in veterans affairs. Shelby, it was an 
the privilege of my life to serve this nation alongside you. Lastly, I want to thank my soldiers and NCOs. They are truly some of the best that this nation has to offer, and if anybody deserves this award, it's them. Nothing that I've done, that I've done this past year, would have been possible without their support and their hard work and their discipline and their drive. Um, thank you. Robert, the Army has vast amounts of sensors throughout the Pacific and in space that you've kept with your team, our nation, and the allies in their Pacific safety issues. Congratulations, Robert. Yeah. Well, folks, we have covered the air, sea, and land. And that leads us now to the Guardians of the Pacific, our U.S. Space Command component, represented today by the Director of Space Forces, Colonel Anthony Zielinski, who will have the honor of awarding our Space Force Defender of the Year. Colonel Zielinski serves as the Director of Space Forces, Pacific Air Forces, Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam. He executes space coordinating authority on behalf of the Joint Force Air Component Commander to coordinate, integrate, and synchronize space capabilities and effects throughout the Indo-Pacific theater of operations. Prior to this current assignment, he serves as the Chief, J-35 Future Operations Division, Joint Task Force, Space Defense, United States Space Command. Now, Colonel Zielinski, he began his service as an avionics technician in various assignments in the Connecticut Air National Guard and Active Duty Air Force. He received his commission through Officer Training School in 1999, and since then he has held a variety of operations and training duty positions involving intercontinental ballistic missiles and space domain awareness and space control systems. He has commanded expeditionary cadet and operations squadrons and has served during multiple contingency deployments to Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Afghanistan. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to introduce to you Colonel Zelensky. I'm truly humbled and appreciative to be part of uh, such an esteemed group that's here at this ceremony today as well as uh, getting a chance, probably the first chance, to represent uh, the United States Space Force at an event like this that recognizes the best of the best in the critical miss missile defense mission area. To this community, I want to give a belated thank you because I'm the likely beneficiary of uh, missile defense capabilities early in my career. In 1991, I was an airman with three stripes on my sleeves, deployed to Saudi Arabia. In January and February of that year, we got to experience several this is real moments. One of them being the launches of uh, Patriot missiles from the batteries at uh, King Fahd Air Base where I was stationed. We'll never know if one of those inbound scuds would have found their mark had they not been intercepted, but we were glad to be under the umbrella of that protection. We were less appreciative of the missile warning we received back then. What we did know from CNN, of course, was that uh, scuds were being launched to the west of us and flying towards Israel, the opposite direction of us, but still resulted in us wearing chem gear for a significant amount of time, at least in our eyes. What I came to learn since was that theater, theater missile warning was very nascent at that time and was essentially a just-on-time tweak to space-based capabilities and processes that were developed for strategic warning of ICBM launches, not theater missile events. events. Since Desert Storm, our missile warning capabilities, software and processing have come a long way. But our biggest advantage, our biggest 
advances are still on the horizon. In the past, we were reliant on a handful of geosynchronous satellites that were over 22,000 miles above Earth. Already underway is the build out of a future, more robust and resilient system known as the National Defense Space Architecture, or NDSA. This new way of business is essential to counter the missile threats that uh, our forces throughout the Indo-Pacific are already uh, under threat of, and certainly in the future. The NDSA will consist of over a thousand satellites operating in low Earth orbits, only hundreds of miles above. The system result in many more space-based sensors to detect launches, the ability to track them throughout their flight, battle management fire control solutions through onboard processing, and the ability to transport all the data necessary to accomplish the mission. All of that is on the horizon with the goal of reaching full operational capability by 2026. But no matter how much technology we have at our disposal, we'll still be reliant on humans in the loop. Today, these operators have to look at their displays and make quick judgment calls on uncoordinated partner launches, erroneous tracks, and never before seen flight profiles. I'm proud to say one of those humans in the loop today is a Space Force Guardian, Technical Sergeant Jeremiah Tillery. Sergeant Tillery started his career as an avionics maintainer on AC-130 gunships at Herbert Field, Florida, and he's been assigned to Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam since July 2017. It hasn't been all sunshine and rose rainbows for him, though. His first missile warning assignment was in 2010 at Thule Air Base Green Greenland. Here at Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam, he started out working on staff for two years before he sought out the opportunity to return to operations crew's duties in the Air and Space Operations Center. He's since accumulated over 1,300 hours of space operations and missile watch duties, which involve rotating shifts and no doubt many weekends and holidays. Sergeant Tillery is the type of person who would take a shift to help someone out, and he's been instrumental in keeping everyone in the region safe through his process improvement efforts and by being the senior instructor for his section's critical mission operations. Ladies and gentlemen, our Space Force Missile of the Year, defender, our Space Defender of the Year, Tech Sergeant Jeremiah Tillery. I wanted to read a little something to you real quick. Uh, when I think of missile defense, uh, this kind of came to mind to me. Uh, I am the watcher on the walls. I am the fire that burns against cold, the light that brings the dawn, the horn that wakes the sleepers, the shield that guards the realms of men. So this is from Game of Thrones, the Night Watch. And when I think of missile defense, all of us, we are you know, the Night's Watch. We're, we're a brotherhood. Uh, Last March, when the world came to a halt for, because of COVID, we kept going. We're, we were there. We, we never mid man We were still weekends, nights, all the time. And I want to thank MDA for giving us this platform to recognize us who are often not uh, we're taken for granted. And I want to thank my, my brothers from the PACAF Night Watch, uh, Master Sergeant Chung, Master Sergeant 19, Captain Vath, who you saw earlier, Captain Conk. Staff Sergeant Gage, Tech Sergeant Grady, they, they've always had my back, I've always had their back, and we keep pushing despite everything. And I uh, want to thank our leadership, and th th thank you. I never thought this would award, I would be up here, but uh, uh, grateful, blessed, humble, 
and uh, Semper Supra, Mahalo, and I am Groot. Thank you. Congratulations, Jeremy. Just a huge addition. I mean, this AOR is so big that we now have the Space Force and we have the Space Guardian to do what you just said. I mean, the, the watchers of the wall. Uh, it's awesome. So, congratulations for doing that and uh, keeping our nation safe. Still trying to get that Game of Thrones reference. That was awesome. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I now have the distinct privilege to introduce Mr. Ricky Ellison, the founder and chairman of the Missile Defense Advocacy Alliance and our most gracious host for today's ceremony. Now, Ricky launched the MDA in 2002 with a singular purpose and mission to drive for the deployment, development, and evolution of missile defense. He has been involved with missile defense since 1980, being introduced to it by then Governor Ronald Reagan's senior defense advisor, Dr. William R. Van Cleve. Now, since its founding, the organization has grown to over 15,000 members across the world and has emerged as the top lay expert voice on missile defense in the world. Ricky has been in attendance for over 277 missile defense tests, he has visited 595 U.S. and allied missile defense bases and platforms and has advocated for missile defense in all 50 states and 28 countries. In 2003, Mr. Ellison established the annual Missile Defender of the Year Award Ceremony. Now, these awards are given to the best United States missile defense soldier, sailor, airman, and National Guardsman and now Space Force from each of the military services involved with missile defense. And one thing you didn't know and you need to know, in 2006, Ricky founded the Youth Impact Program for disadvantaged and at-risk adolescent boys in our nation's inner cities. There have been 35 Youth Impact Programs in 14 of our nation's major cities and major universities. The Youth Impact Program has been recognized twice by the United States Congress and Senate and in House Congressional Resolutions for its overall achievements, innovation, and impact. Since the beginning, the Youth Impact Program has impacted 3,117 at-risk youth, 682 NCAA athletes, 137 public school teachers, 142 U.S. Marines, and 67 U.S. Army soldiers. Now, in case you didn't know this one, earlier in his career, Ricky played professional football for 10 years as a starting middle linebacker at the San Francisco 49ers and Oakland Laters, winning three Super Bowl championships. He was also the first New Zealander to play in the NFL and the first New Zealander to win a Super Bowl. In 2017, Ricky was inducted in the Polynesian Football Hall of Fame. Now, he also played college football at the University of Southern California, winning a national championship and two Rose Bowls following a state high school football championship in Arizona. Ricky earned a Bachelor of Science degree in international relations with a graduate emphasis on defense and strategic studies from the University of Southern California in 1983. He's attended the National Security Seminar at the Army War College and also the National Security Army Security Seminar at the Air War College. He's also attended the University of Notre Dame, where he attended a business management and entrepreneurial program in 2013. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm round of applause for a true champion who truly knows what it takes to win, who knows that it's defense that wins champions, Mr. Ricky Ellison. Thank you. People first, winners associate with winners. Thank you, distinguished guests, Ty, John, um, Reginald, and Anthony for being here. 
it's, it's a reflection of your culture. It's a reflection of the champions of what you do. Um, I do want to start off by thanking Anthony. We, we got a little Marine presence here, so he, he's our Marine presence. Do want to leave him out? And certainly, you've done a great job uh, as a master of ceremonies for this event. Uh, obviously, Bill Van Cleve, a Marine, was very close to me. But I'm a, I'm a Pacific baby, as, as, as he said, born on the Pacific. My first port of entry was Honolulu, Hawaii. It's 1968. I went to school in L.A. and played ball in San Francisco. So I'm all in with you guys to defend this entire region that's, at, that, that's in, in place today. Um, I do really want to go back and thank uh, Admiral Davidson and many. About two or three years ago, we sat and talked about this event and talked about the emergence of how important missile defense is in the integration of our joint force to create this to compete. And this was one of the ideas that we put forward. This event was supposed to be done a year ago, and we couldn't do it. And I, and I really want to appreciate the 94th WMDC, Mark Holler, that was the weaver. He's the weaver of our joint forces around the Pacific, but he's, him and his team are behind us hosting this event uh, with you today. It's, the world is challenging. It's exciting because you've got a cauldron that's being built and it's gonna force you to become great. And the near peer competitor of China is that cauldron competitor that's going to make us better than we are. And as John Hyten, General John Hyten stated, on deterrence, we have to inflict cost, we have to deny, and we have to communicate those two things. And we have no question the world's best inflictor of pain if we had to go that route. But we don't have our denial where it should be. So in this world that on the fringes in regional spots around the world, that's being tested on us. And we have to be able to deny that part of this new deterrent. And that's where the focus has got to come from what we need to do. And it's got to be a joint, and it's got to be an allied capability that can be put together. And you're the pillars here. Those four services are the pillars of creating that capability. But if I look at my football terms, and I've played on some prolific offenses that can score all the time, and if you can look at the Super Bowl that just passed over and how prolific the Kansas City offense was. But it was the defense that wins the games. And the defense can handle all sorts of different types of weapons and being able to negate that. And what we all want to do is make them punt. It's about punting. And it's about that deterrent to give the ball back to our offense. And I think we're at a stage right now where we're very similar to post-World War II, where we have a new service that's coming to play, where we have a flat budget, where we have a new weapon. Back then, it was a V1. Today, it's a hypersonic. So we got to step back and relook at our roles and responsibilities because we got to play as a team. You may be able to get away having a DB do pass rush against a lesser opponent. You can't play that way against a great opponent. You're going to have to define your roles, whether it's stopping the run, playing deep, and get that more efficient and more capable and bring it all together. It's exciting because your theater not, not UCOM, not CENCOM, your theater is going to lead this movement. And Guam is certainly one of the spots that we're going to combine this capability together across the joint force to create this new architecture that's going to give us denial. And it's going to lead 
our other AORs in that capability. So you are on the forefront in the Pacific Defense Initiative, Congress, it's not a partisan issue. They're all in on this. And they have to have leadership. And character matters, leadership matters. And these five represent that type of character and leadership. And you have to build on that. You have to come together. It's about trust, right? That's the single biggest thing to, that we have to accomplish between each other. Because if you can trust each other, you communicate. You play for each other. And we got to do it with our allies. And I congratulate the pick. I mean, you were at four countries last, last time I was here. Now you're at 11. And I really think next year, when we have our five missile defenders up here, we should virtual at least four or five of those pick allies to be part of this team, because they need to be recognized as well. In closing, you're this is a team, and uh, so wonderful that your state, the state of Hawaii, is behind you. Uh, Senator President Ron Kochi has got his state senate to give each one of you guys a certificate. They're part of our team. So I wanted to pass that on to you. I want to pass on the excitement that I have for each one of you in creating that culture to win. It's exciting. And it's going to be great, and you're going to win. So thank you very much for making this event happen and setting that match, that flame of that cauldron that we're going to win on. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ricky. Thank you, Ricky, for all you do to ensure that defense will always prevail and win. So folks, on behalf of Ricky and the Missile Defense Advocacy Alliance, the commanders of the United States Indo-Pacific Command and a very grateful American public, we appreciate the dedication and determination of your Indo-Pacific Air and Missile Defenders of the Year. But at this time, I'd like to recognize them once again on stage. So will Captain Ryan Vath, Lieutenant Colonel William Hunter, Chief Warrant Officer 3, Robert Finley, and Technical Sergeant Jeremiah Tillery. And I hope the Lieutenant is on the USS John Finn right now watching this transmission. But you please join us on stage to be recognized one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one team, one fight right here. Give them a round of applause. Now we'll close with a grateful mahalo nui loa to you all and a hui ho to see you again next year for the next 2021 Air and Missile Defender of the Year ceremony that'll happen at Indo-Pacific Command. And next time, let's hope it's without masks. God bless you. Take care.